I said, well, I'm joined now from Jerusalem by an advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu, the former Israeli ambassador to the UN, Dor Gold. Uh, good evening. Um, first of all, can we deal with Beit Hanun? Now, the Israeli Defense Force insists there was nobody in that compound. But you heard there Bob Turner, who's head of UN mission in Gaza, insisting there were people there, there were children there. Is the UN not telling the truth? Well, I don't think we can resolve this on a BBC television show. It has to be looked at and examined very carefully. Israel has its own self-investigative methods, uh, which have uh, been respected by the world community in the past. And I'm sure, as we have looked at other incidents uh, in the Gaza Strip, we will very carefully examine what happened in Beit Hanun. It's our initial estimate that in Beit Hanun, uh, Israel didn't cause the uh, damage that you're describing. But um, I, to say the truth, I can't really comment too much about what's going on today in Gaza because we don't have information from soldiers who are there now. It's going to take a bit, few weeks after the Operation Merlin, and we'll start to hear it, just like we heard after Operation Cast Lead five years ago. But there are things that are stated in up upfront policies that are stated up front by ministers and generals. And one of them, for example, is the new thing we have this operation, which I think is very problematic. This idea that you basically, you pick a house, and it's enough that it's a house of a Hamas activist, and you can call the family, notify them in advance that you're going to bomb the place, give them 10, 15, 20 minutes to leave, and then you basically blow up the building. It doesn't matter if they left or not. You know, this idea that because you gave the people warning over the phone, if they don't listen to your commands over the phone, it's a death penalty and you just blow the hell out of them. Let's be quite clear here. You are saying that the UN version of events could be wrong. Really? The UN? Well, we're talking about an incident that just occurred in a very intense combat zone. But I'll tell you this a little bit a, about how Israel... It was in an Israel, area where there were children playing. That's right. And Israel makes every effort possible to avert civilian casualties. I mean, I don't know another army in the world that set up a whole Arabic-speaking unit to drop leaflets in areas with maps to people to say, look, this area is going to become a combat zone. Missiles are stored here. A training is going on here. Command and control centers are located in this area. Please leave because we're going to have to operate here. But right now, now because, of, because Gaza Excuse is me, so intensely the packed, the Dor Dorgo, because there is such intense packing of people into Gaza, what's happened is there are over a thousand people dead, 75% of them civilians, and at the moment, toll is rising. 226 children. Tonight, Benjamin Netanyahu said you need stamina and determination. Does that mean there is no end to the death toll? There is no upper limit? If a thousand children die, it can't be helped? Well, you know, let me remind you of one fact. This war was initiated by Hamas, which launched rockets at our cities. The reasons why you don't have thousands of Israelis dead is because Israel invested in civil defense shelters and in an anti-missile system. And that was not there five years ago. And I think in that sense, I can definitely see this deterioration where we had numerous operations in the past 10 years, but every operation, we're crossing more and more red lines that we haven't crossed in the one before. And basically the next operation, sadly enough, starts where the moral low that we ended the, the present one. So we can really see this with time from one operation to the other, we're becoming more aggressive, accepting worse techniques. Yuli Novak, a former Israeli Air Force officer writing in the Guardian newspaper yesterday, said that she once firmly believed that the Israeli military uh, was the most moral in the world, but not anymore, she said. Do you share that view? Yuli is our executive director, and I think she's coming from the perspective of where we all come, which is, you know, 2002, there was the bombing of Salah Shkade, one of the leaders of Hamas, and, uh, there was a bombing of his house, and 14 civilians were killed. And people were outraged in Israel. There were petitions. There were there were petitions to the High Court against this. Actually, the IDF, the Israeli military, was forced to open an investigation into that case. And what they found was that there was a mistake. You know, so the house was bombed. Salah Shkade's house, as a leader of Hamas, was bombed. 14 civilians were killed. It was a mistake. Where we are today, today, 2014, 12 years after. 
were bombing up houses, we just called them in advance and asked them to leave, but that's good enough. And the second part is, there is no outrage. And I think that says very much about where we are as a society, you know. Yeah. After so many operations in Gaza, we become numb. We get used to the numbers, just like you basically compare the numbers. We forget that these are human beings. Yeah. yeah. Is it just that, that you, you describe it as the numbness? The Israeli military, of course, has always in, enjoyed huge support among the Israeli public. But where public opinion might once, as you, uh, as you said there, uh, uh, have held the military in check if, if civilians were killed in its operations, today that, that criticism is largely absent is it is it because Israeli society is just numb yeah yeah I think you know this is very sad to to say it's my society after all this is my home and this is where I live but it looks like that 47 years of occupation ruling on other people stripping them from their dignity and rights 12 years of operations in Gaza and even you know what is this five six operations after 2005 after the withdrawal of settlements from Gaza and we're just, every time it goes by, we just tend to forget and we get used to it. Uh, yeah, we are in a place where we are not any more able to show empathy to the other side and to see Palestinians as equal human beings to us. That, that's what happened to me as a soldier in the ground. I remember it going into the first Palestinian house in the middle of the night and tearing apart the place, seeing the faces of the children and doing it in the 10th time with not feeling any more anything. And I think in a way what happened to me in a micro level is happening to our yeah. own society. What if, uh, what if the, the, the Israeli death toll continues uh, to, to, to climb? Will that have any impact on, on Israeli public opinion, do you think? I really hope that no one more will die here. This is something, this is heartbreaking and a tragedy um, uh, to see these numbers of people who are, who are losing their life. And I find it very difficult to talk about this issue in, in, in that context. Um, I really hope that we're going to put our, you know, get our act together and demand a different policy because this doesn't work. You know, going back to the question you asked in the beginning, look, we had Operation Warm Winter, we had summer rains, we had autumn clouds, we had cast lead, we had pillar of defense, we have this operation now. Where is this taking us? Just for the next operation, two years down the road, another death toll like this? I think we need to rethink our strategy and the way we deal with Palestinians, the way we deal with Gaza. This is not working. Hamas did not build that for the Palestinian people. What it built were attack tunnels, tunnels which would allow its operatives, heavily armed, to go into Israeli villages like Kibbutz Nachal Oz, like what happened today, and massacre its population. But now, we, uh, we are doing everything possible to minimize civilian losses, and if you let me explain it, I'll show you how. But we cannot apologize for the fact that the government of Israel is protecting its people, whereas Hamas is sacrificing its people as human shields. But let's just be quite clear, there is no upper limit to the dead in Gaza. There is no decision that perhaps if a thousand children die, it's too many. It will just be the casualties of war. You know, you waged a war as a NATO member against Yugoslavia and Kosovo. Some 2,000 civilians died so that Kosovo could be free and independent from Yugoslavia. And do you know why you did that? You did that because you estimated that Milosevic and his forces would massacre the Albanian population in Kosovo. So, you know, wars do have their costs, but we make every effort to follow the laws of war and to minimize the uh, damage. For example, what country has Arabic-speaking soldiers who call the cell phones of people living in an area and tell them a strike is about to occur because this is a legitimate military target. If, well, if what you, other if country you put, sends, if you excuse that, me, no, no, excuse but if you, me. You repeated that from earlier and I want to press you on that because if you do make those calls and I have no reason to doubt you do make those calls, you have to, you're talking about women and children and civilians trying to get out the way, but where to? Where can they get out the way of okay. your shells? That's the Israelis dropped a leaflet saying you should get out of this area. Why are you still here? Where can we go? Where is safe in Gaza? We've just heard a shell going off at 50 yards down the road. Are you going to stay here? We're going to stay here. Last night many people evacuated, but they didn't find anywhere. So in the morning they had to come back home. This man had already fled the suburb of Shajair. 
excellent question. And so one of the things you have to do is when you design a leaflet or any kind of communication with the population, you have to have a map with a route for where they should go. And that's exactly what the Israeli army does. Now, you also have Hamas telling the population, don't yeah. leave. They tell them. We also have evidence that they pay them so they don't leave. And unfortunately, you get these situations arising. Now, right, Hamas also doesn't know how to handle... Let's turn to...